am not in a good mood. I am feeling very sassy and annoyed and have terrible period cramps and I am just in general not in a good mood. But I was thinking that maybe talking about yarns and whips and FOs would make me feel better. So I have my um, heating pad and some nice peppermint tea and it is raining outside. It is kind of this gloomy day. Very, it looks very grey outside. Um, so it's nice to be here inside filming for you guys. I also feel that I might be getting sick, but fingers crossed that it won't happen because I don't want to and I'm not having it <laughs> at the moment. Today we're gonna check my finished objects and some whips and it has been a long time since I've done that so it is exciting. Grab something to drink, maybe your favorite coffee or tea and some knitting or crochet. We don't discriminate here. If you are here for the first time, hi, my name is Heidi and this is the Heidi DIY knitting podcast where me, Heidi, does some DIY stuff. This is my space and here I mostly talk about knitting. way too hot. So we could maybe start with what I am wearing. Um, to be honest, I have no idea uh, what was the last thing that I showed in my last uh, Whips and FOs episode. I think this was almost done, but it was not completely done. So I'm just going to talk about it. This is the Good Grandpa Cardigan by Kadri. And I love it. I have been wearing it quite a lot. And especially now when the spring was supposed to be here and now it is cold again. It is like minus degrees Celsius in the mornings and in the night. So this has become handy. I knitted this in Knitting for Olive heavy merino and soft silk mohair and it was very enjoyable and very quick knit even though I don't enjoy purling like the long rows which this has a lot but it was such a big needle so there were not so many stitches and it was just very quick and enjoyable. So let me stand up so you can see. There is also these pretty pockets. There was a very good video on how to do the sewing of the pockets, like very neat way. I picked these um, cork buttons, which are lovely. I think they are amazing and I love the tactile feel of it. Uh, in general, it is very um, oversized and loose cardigan with drop shoulder and a deep v-neck. And I like it very much. If I would have been a bit wiser, I would have picked a color that is even slight even like tiny bit cooler it is it is not like super warm brown but it is warmer than most of the things in my wardrobe so it's harder to combine with things but i love it so it doesn't matter i will use it anyway so this is my good grandpa cardigan and the pattern is from Kadri. I'm not gonna talk about it so much because I have talked about it in the earlier episodes so much. Um, if you haven't seen them, 
here's a playlist so you can check them out my husband is making noise and I'm not happy about it I'm a bit sassy today it is not a big deal but Next thing is the another cardigan or kind of a cardigan and it is this Cardi Jumper by Burton aka Ines Oliveira and I love it. I have been wearing it so so much already last time i wore it it was actually on sunday for my daughter's birthday so it has been festive with me and in the everyday life as well i actually did not make it into a cardigan so this is a um, faux button band that i made so I could knit this entirely in stockinette and just um, do the bottom band uh, over the stockinette. I just picked up stitches across the front and continued to the neckline with the eye cord. It was not very hard. And I'm pretty sure I talked about this as well in the last Whips and FOs episode. And the only thing that was missing was the buttons at that point. And they are so pretty. Ooh, let me show it on. Hmm. And this is how it looks on. I love how simple and elegant it is. And it is somehow, at the same time, very minimal, but I think it has some, like, nice feminine touches and clever details, like the shoulder seam. I love it. And it is my favorite jumper at the moment. The buttons I ordered from Etsy because I couldn't find similar or the style I wanted from the uh, button stores here in Finland. They have this golden edge and then this rounded rounded cream white shiny button. The fit is kind of oversized and it also has very generous drop shoulder construction and a more shallow v-neck. And I love it very much. I have posted a lot of photos of this on Instagram. So if you're interested, go and follow me there. Maybe my tea is now better. Hmm. Now it has cooled off a bit. Maybe my mind is cooling off at the same time maybe but then i'm just getting happier because i get to talk about knitting and knits hmm such a calming effect hmm. and then we have next finished object i'm just gonna leave this on because it is comfy and i can't be bothered to switch and this is actually my last finished object of the day. I think. I think. But yeah. And here we have number six cable cutout. So it is a all over cabled design. Um, like a crop top with folded arm bands. I don't know what they are called. And folded neckline. They are all in twisted rib and the hem is also in twisted rib. But the entire um, uh, 
like the main focus or the main point of this design, the focal point is in the back. And I will show it to you. Da, 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 da. So it has this beautiful cutout. Why? That's why it's called cable cutout. It is so pretty and uh, I was test knitting this pattern. There was some problems in the process, but it was generally very well written butter pattern and there was um, a lot of thought and effort put into it and I am in awe of people who just come up with these um, beautiful ideas for their designs and uh, ha put the time and effort into making them into patterns I will put a video or a picture of me wearing this over here so you can see how it fits on me. It is quite cropped, which I don't mind because I tend to wear a lot of very high-waisted skirts and pants. Um, but it would be very easy to make this into a longer one, so you just knit the part before the cutout a bit longer and then just start it later but i think uh, it looks quite proportionate um, with this length yeah i like it i like it this way i had to put a, an elastic into the uh, neckband I have no idea why it turned out so loose or for me because I think other test knitters didn't have that problem and I actually knit this in 2.5 millimeter needles uh, even though I think 3 millimeters was the recommended one but that is how I actually got the gauge because my knitting is quite loose at times so I don't think it was because I was knitting too loose maybe I just picked up too many stitches but it became very nice and neat with the elastic in there and I think it will keep its shape very well let's talk about the yarn this is one of my all-time favorite yarns I really like the knitting for olive cotton merino because when you are knitting it, it has a lot of the properties of the wool. It's not so stiff as the cotton because I don't really like to knit like full on cotton yarns. I do have a couple of skeins in my stash, but I don't like they are not my favorite to knit, but this is very nice on on my hands and very nice to knit, but it's not super warm and super sweaty even during the warmer days. So that is one of my favorite favorites from Knitting for Olive. And I'm actually thinking that I might use this instead of Merino on some other projects as well so instead of using merino and silk mohair i might use this cotton merino and silk mohair so it wouldn't be too warm because i'm someone who gets very sweaty easily so i think this might be a good option if you are like me and turn into a sweaty ball of mess easily <laughs> yeah says someone who also loves rustiky wool oh well and this yarn is purchased from my favorite yarn store Anaya Eila uh, which is nearby at Vanta and it is the only store in Finland that carries 
uh, knitting for olive yarns and it is always like some kind of color therapy to go there and uh, look at all the yarns and um, imagine all the yarn combos and have lovely conversations with them with the ladies who uh, own the store yeah that is one of my happy places this is ready for the warmer days or maybe for the layering piece for the cooler days and uh, the pattern should be out soon because the deadline for the test knit is this Friday so when you are seeing it it is today and and that means that the pattern should be out quite soon tea so that was all my finished objects and then we will uh, move on to the whips what shall i show you first Maybe I will show you the one that is almost finished that I haven't shown you in here at all. So let me show you. Oh my, wait a second. There is a yarn mess already. Mm. This is my almost finished levitate wrap. And it is designed by my favorite things, knitwear. And it was part of the Isayer. Why is it always so hard? Isager, Isayer, Breeze collection. And I love it so much. I will try to show you how it, it crosses. So it is this wrap style sweater or a cardigan and it will have this what is it called ties that tie them at the side and i am actually almost finished with the first tie so that means that i will have only one tie to make and attach and then it's all only to weave in the ends and so on and this has been so enjoyable and so 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 quick to knit and i realized that i am i am being a contradiction at the moment i always say that i am a walking contradiction because I say that I hate curling and then I have these two cardigans that I say that they have been the most enjoyable projects but that was true and I actually knit the entirety of the body in like two weeks no, in like a two weeks or a week maybe it was very quick it's done on six millimeter needles and then I stumbled into the double knitting. I have never done double knitting in this scale before, so it was quite a lot. You basically double knit the entire front edge into the back and then back to the front. And then you start again at the hem and continue to the other tie so there is a lot of double knitting and it took me like two days to knit this first section of it so you can count how many hours i've been knitting this um, i almost said bad boy but maybe it's a bad girl yeah or a good girl i don't know i love the design i love how sleek it is i love the uh, shoulder seams uh, at the back 
I love how the double knitting looks. It is very neat and finished. And overall, I like the slouchiness and the lightness of the garment. This was originally knit with Isager Eco Soft yarn, which is a blown wool and cotton yarn. But I bought secondhand this massive pouch of Finnish wool unspun yarn, and I love it. And in the original, there was also some Isagera Trio held with the EcoSoft yarn. And so I held the Isager Trio also with the unspun yarn because it needs something uh, or it is very fragile. It will break very easily if you put any stretch to it. But with something that doesn't stretch it is very easy to um very easy to knit with you just have to be careful when you are like pulling the yarn from the skein you really cannot do that so i just unraveled a bit from the skein to my hand and knit from it and then did that again when the amount was finished so you can't really tug the yarn at all but yeah the combination worked very well i got gauge and yeah it is just beautiful combination very light and airy and it's probably gonna be very warm but also breathable and can we also i said that i bought the unspun second hand but this uh, trio is also second hand, so I got that from my friend because it wasn't her color, it was too like reddish brown. And look, it matches perfectly with the unspun. You can't really even, even see it. Um, it has this light like a slight reddish tint or variegation that it brings but it is very beautiful yeah it is very close to an end right now i will probably finish it this week this will be so lovely and i'm so happy that i Got to use all this beautiful secondhand yarn and it actually took very little yarn i'm pretty sure i'm on the third cake in both of the yarns and there is like this much left in the third ball of the trio and i had six so i will probably get a lovely top or a t-shirt from this see look at this this is the three color it, it was called chestnut i think and it has this slight reddish tint but it is a lovely chocolatey dark brown i love it in the unspun there was no yarn name or brand name or color or anything it was just nameless finish just finish wool that is unspun there was not even like meterage or anything i just bought all of it i think i still have like six balls so i can knit more with that have some tea or coffee. Oh, now it's cooling down very fast. Next one. I want to show you my new knitting bag. I bought this from the thrift store and it was like six euros. So basically very cheap. And immediately when I saw it, I was thinking that this is perfect 
for walking and knitting. It just fits perfectly right here and the yarn can come there and you can just knit and walk at the same time. And it is also very handy just as a yarn basket or a project bag for the house. And here I have the Y top from Knitting for Olive. And now it has progressed. And that is because I <laughs> I got away from the this part because it is just two by two rib and somehow it is so boring for my brain that I just cannot do it for the long time. I just had this when I was at the bus knitting or at like knit nights or somewhere where I just where I can just knit and I don't have to focus that much. But when I got here, it was like a couple of days that I just knit this much, which is almost a <laughs> quarter of the length. But I, I really do like doing all the shaping and increases and it is very addictive for me to see the patterns forming like here this is the um, front marker here the middle and here you can see these are the under boob <laughs> shapings and if i remember correctly there will be another shaping that goes to the other direction and then there is um soon there is the separation of the front and back and then it's decreases and the straps so this is very close to getting done and i'm excited because i really like this color and this yarn and i'm happy to tell you that this is my first skein still going very strongly it was 100 grams of Lumo Ava Silki. This is also bought from Anna ja Eila uh, with my own money. So it is not sponsored yarn. It's the colorway Suklo, which means chocolate, but it also has this beautiful pinkish or purplish undertone and it is very nice and shiny and very soft. It is 50% merino and 50% silk. And it was hand dyed and very expensive, but I love it. I can already imagine this with the levitate wrap. And I just, I love this color with dark brown. It would also go very well with white or muted pink would also look very nice or beige or this grayish color would go very nicely yeah but i will probably just knit this quickly out of the way because i have so many uh, summer top ideas as you probably saw on my uh, knitting plans video I am planning on making knitted tops for this summer and the thing is that for me they are not just summer garments I am gonna use them all year around because a the winter is quite cold here in Finland so I can use like layers and layers of knits and also the summer is quite cold and I can use some wool even during the spring or summer. I am just gonna make sure that I pick appropriate fibers. I'm probably not gonna make too many full-on wool tops, but maybe just like this wool and silk blend 
Mulan cotton blends are good and then I have a couple of summer tops worth of pure silk and then I have pure cotton and what else do I have? These different kinds of blends with viscose and linen and cotton like Sandeskand line. Take the Snowe which has not progressed anywhere. I don't remember when was the last time I knitted this. I think I am doing the increases for the sleeves now. So there is not so much to show you, except that this is a beautiful 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 pattern and very nice construction I think I am soon at the place where I should divide for the sleeves and the body but I am in no rush with this even though it is cold in Finland in the summer I'm pretty sure that there is not so much use for a very rustic wool jumper i might be wrong but yeah so it has just been um on the back burner but i'm just showing it to you so you can remember it and see that it is beautiful and it is still going to be done just it hasn't had so much love lately but I need to fix that I'm probably gonna have to refresh my memory and see what I was actually doing and where I am in the pattern and what was the pattern repeat and so on but it will be okay I will come back to it maybe soon because the levitate wrap is soon ready and I need some like heavier knit in my rotation as well and I can already see this imagine it with my faded blue jeans in the autumn or fall which one is it I don't know and it will be gorgeous And the last one, it lives in this beautiful bag. Look at it, it is so cute. It is beautifully um, this gray green. And it has a knitter in there. It is by Laurel Knits. It is her like merch bag. And she is a Finnish hand dyer that just opened her studio uh, actually quite nearby where I live. So I was at the opening and it was very nice and she's gonna start hosting knit nights in there. So that's fun. And here comes the other test knit that I am part of. It is so pretty. This will be the Minou cardigan. I have no idea if that is how you say it, but maybe. And it is this combination of cables and is it half fisherman's rib or half brioche? I have no idea. But this brioche looking stitch and I love it. I love this. Ooh, love this stitch pattern. It is by Knitting Deer, aka Luisa. And we have a very nice test knit group. There is a very nice group mentality. I like it. I am waiting to be wearing this one. I have not been working on it. For a couple of weeks now because I was finishing up the cable cutout and finishing up the levitate wrap but I will pick this up 
again there is not that much yet but you can already see that it will be beautiful so it will be a cardigan with a v-neck and some buttons and a double knitted button band and this beautiful pattern it is actually very enjoyable to knit and there is no long rows of purling because of this pattern and it's very addicting and that is always very nice when the pattern is so engaging i am using um, knitting for all its soft silk mohair and merino and the merino is in the color mushroom rose and the mohair is in the color powder and together they create this uh, slightly pinkish beige which is one of my new favorite colors and i really like how the mohair makes the merino just slightly bit more muted and suitable for my color palette yeah this was actually the reason why i last time went to anna ya Ayla. i went to pick up this for the test knit because when i originally applied for the test knit i have had a different yarn combination in mind from my stash but when i swatched it just did not work and i actually um I'm gonna sell the yarn because it just was not it's not for me but yeah I ended up with this one thinking that it it will be a nice neutral for my wardrobe yeah so I have some cabling projects ribbing and almost done with double knitting and after that it means time for new castons to be fair i have some projects that are like on hold there is the diana's bandana by ozerta then there is the cherry dress from sonnescon then there is the sleeves for the another ribbed body but somehow the small ribbing it just pains me at the moment and i'm modifying the frankie ganser i already made so that is also on hold i just i don't want to knit stocking it or small ribbing or i don't have i don't want to think about the double knitting at the moment but i'm gonna do those projects just not now. I will pick up when I need some some more of that. Shall we knit a bit? I will pick up my levitate wrap and work on this double knitted tie if I find my other DPN. Found it. So how are you guys? It's Fun to be here again and just with the regular episode I have been doing the um, different types of episodes more lately even though usually I do more of this just sharing my knitting with you so it's fun to be back with this please tell me what you are knitting uh, at the moment when you're watching this uh, it would be fun to know so um, I feel like I am with you in the in the moment yeah and how are you guys how are you doing now you can share I have actually not been feeling the best and if you follow me on instagram you probably already know that i am on a medical leave or sick leave at the moment 
due to a burnout or just generally being exhausted all the time. So that will probably continue to at the end of this May at least. And yeah, I have just been very tired and not feeling the best but and there has been a lot of things that have like accumulated and um, they have their part in this um, exhaustion or burnout so it is not just work it is the overall like balance of my life that has been quite um, not the best so I am trying to overcome that but I realized that I cannot really rush this so I'm not sure how long it's going to take and how it will affect this um, knitting part of my life I just want to keep you guys on the loop so you know what's going on and you maybe understand if there is uh, breaks or of, or if I seem tired <laughs> um, but also I want to share because if there is someone who is feeling similarly who has like who is exhausted or has burnout I want them to know that you're not alone and there are many people who have gone through it or are going through it at the moment so just please know that you are not alone and you are worthy of the help and you are worthy of feeling good in your everyday life so if you feel like you cannot do it anymore you are so tired you're not interested in anything just go see your um, doctor or some medical nurse or someone who might be able to help i'm also not like there is no reason to worry i am just trying to um, prioritize my life and recover and not be exhausted all the time so that means doing nice things and I have been sleeping a lot and not doing anything also <laughs> like literally not doing anything and I have been knitting a lot as well but that is the part of my life you probably already knew that I knit a lot I've been trying to take care of myself better so move in a way that feels good eat balanced food sleep rest see the loved, loved ones or or something like that. I'm trying to do nice things every day. So I'm hopeful that this will go in a better direction quite soon. But I am trying not to rush things because if it goes away very quickly, it might also come back very quickly. I am quite excited of my spring summer knitting projects so I might start some at this week because I am I'm also very excited about clearing my needles and like not working on 50,000 <laughs> projects at the time so it might be that I try to knit the things I have going on at the moment and have a fewer projects 
going on at the same time. Because sometimes it might be mentally taxing to focus on so many projects. But I also need a little variation in my life, so I'm not gonna be a monogamous knitter, probably ever, but we will see how that goes. I'm also quite excited on clearing out my yarn stash. I have been selling some of my stash and also I have swapped or gifted some to my friend and that has felt good because there has been some very stagnant yarn and that has not been inspiring in years so I am probably not gonna use them for the following years either so it, it has felt good to let go of them and that does not mean that I'm gonna just buy more <laughs> because I got rid of them um, I just want, want my stash to be a bit more neat and compact and full of things I truly love and now there is parts of it that I'm not so excited about and those are the ones that I want to either knit into a project or just sell or donate because I see no point in just keeping them there. They might bring joy to someone else. So uh, maybe I, I am just donating or selling them. I'm not just gonna donate them into a thrift store. I want to like find someone who loves them and uses them. So yeah. This is already very soon, which makes me happy. And other things that have been inspiring and bringing me joy. Um, the nature is finally waking up and there is little flowers and little leaves on the trees. And I'm actually very happy about the rain because there has been a lot of pollen and my allergies are going nuts and it is very hard to differentiate if you are getting sick or if you have allergies I'm not so sure I've also been inspired by the knitting social media there has been so much lovely content and I don't know lovely people and I also cleared out my uh, closet and there was a lot of clothes that just don't fit right or are just not part of my true style so I'm gonna sell those as well but oh, oh my nose but I'm trying to not make that into a chore or something I need to do because there is no point in being medical in medical leave if you are making yourself exhausted with chores. But I have a ten tendency to do that kind of stuff, so I need to be careful. <laughs> yeah. So next up in my knitting life, there will be summer tops and tees, trying to clear out my needles. So that does mean that I cannot start like 50 new projects, which is gonna be hard, but I will try. And luckily I am quite inspired of things I already have on my needles. So that should not be a huge problem, right? I think this was all I have for today. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. It really helps out me and it helps other people to see these videos as well. And I will see you next.
next time. Have a lovely day.